My name is Real. I'm Officer Shamar. I'm Officer Yashamar. And we're from True Nation Israelite Congregations. And the topic we're going to be covering today is order. And the reason why we're getting into this is because order is something, regardless of what it is in our nation that you're looking at, order is something that we lack, be it in leadership, be it in financial stability, be it in uh, actual building of our nation, anything that we try to do, it would lack order, and that would be the downfall. Give me 1 Corinthians 14 and 40. 1 <coughs> Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. Mm -hmm. Let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. So no matter what it is that you do, no matter how great or how minuscule you believe it to be, it should have order behind it. Give me Psalms chapter 37 and verse 23. Because now you're thinking, well, okay, order, what does that consist of? I mean, you could say everybody has order in one way or another. Somebody who gets up every morning at 6 a.m., you could say they have order. But if that same person can't keep a job, they're not responsible, they can't build anything, they can't move towards anything, do they really have order? Psalms 37, 23, go ahead. Verse 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Are ordered by the Lord. And what is the most high ordained for us? The law, statutes, and the commandments. So he said the... the Steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So the way you move, the way you talk, the way you think, all of that is coming from, it's ordained by the Most High. It consists of the Most High. That old saying, they eat, sleep, and they defecate, whatever it is. It's coming straight from the Most High. You don't break the chain of command. Ecclesiastes chapter 37 and verse 16. Go ahead. Verse 16. Let reason go before every enterprise. So let reason go before every enterprise. Uh, give me Proverbs 11 and 14. So when you have reason going before every enterprise, for one, you're more likely to, you're, you're calculating, you're strategizing. That is an aspect of order. Not just a chain of command, because anybody can bark orders, but it's actually what their orders are consistent of, or consisting of, excuse me. Go ahead, give me uh, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Uh -huh. Where no counsel is, the people fall. So where are you supposed to get this reason? You're supposed to get it from the council. In the Hebrews 13 to 17, so the council, who is that supposed to consist of? What are they supposed to be giving you? We already said we're supposed to walk and be with order with the statutes, the commandments, and the laws of the Most High. And that's supposed to come from the council. We no longer have a council in that sense, but we still have some kind of order, some kind of establishment. The Most High didn't leave any gaps. There was no questions. If there is something that needs to happen. You could be able to find the scriptures and search the scriptures and find the solution to say a problem, to say an issue, to say a contingency. Go ahead. This is Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Obey them that have rule over you. Obey them that have rule over you. Uh, give me the definition of obey. Obey. Mm -hmm. Comply with the command. Comply with the command. Go ahead. Direction mm -hmm. or request of a person or a law. So you have to comply. Say that again. Comply with the command, uh -huh. direction, or request. Or direction or request in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. So you have to comply, which means to listen, to follow, of a command or a request. Whatever is asked of you, whatever is needed of you, whatever is required of you, you have to go in and do whatever it is that, that, that uh, you've been requested for. That's order. You look at a military, what do they have? It has no options. I need you to scrub the deck. I need you. It's, it's, it's instant. As soon as I'm done talking, I need you to start working. That's order. You stand there, you stand up straight, you look at me when I'm talking, or however it is that the officer or the higher commander uh, requires of you to listen, they stand at attention. I'm listening, yes, sir. Then they go ahead and they do whatever it is that's asked of them. That's order. Read. This is 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3. Uh huh. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, mm -hmm. and the head of the woman is the man. So the head of every man is Yahweh Shai, and the head of the woman is the man. Now that's something in our nation we lack on a whole new level. It's order, but even more so amongst ourselves in our households. You have every, and I remember seeing it as a child, the black women, the stereotype was being substantiated. Oh, black man ain't this, he ain't that, he's lazy. You know, uh, you need to a white boy. 
And every black man was like, man, I ain't trying to deal with that. All she gonna do is she gonna pop off at the mouth even if I need something, she gonna tell me why I don't. There's no order. The head of the, the, head of the household is supposed to be the man. And you get that from the uh, little 1950s kind of feel to it. The man, he went out, he worked, he came home. What was there waiting for him? His wife and his children. Whatever it is that needed to be dealt with in the household, she dealt with it. That's order. Because how are you supposed to come home? Now you need to deal with your work. Now you have issues at home. How could you possibly function like that? Not effectively. Where you have a problem with everything. Everything is difficult. You can't seem to accomplish anything. It's only going to work if every gear is turning in the right direction. If you have things that are going against each other, what's going to happen? It's going to stress and it's going to strain until something cracks, something breaks. And that's exactly what happened. That's why you have the, uh, the, the strife between the men and the women of our nation. What do you what kind of say? When he be up, he gonna be on for a white girl. Lay you for a white girl. Now our men are infatuated with the concept of being with these other nations and, and marrying their daughters and vice versa. That's not building our nation, because now guess what happens? We already don't have a culture, not a real culture. We have stereotypes. You ain't black unless you like fried chicken, you ain't black unless you like watermelon. And then, when you have these other nations incorporating their customs into our people, guess what? You have little Israelite children taking on the customs of the heathen. How is that supposed to be ordered? How are they supposed to know anything? How are they supposed to move? They won't. And that's exactly what you're going to have. More disorder. So basically, you need to submit. You need to give yourself over. Now read me the definition of submit. Submit accept or yield to a superior force or to the authority or will of another person or the authority or will i'm not saying somebody who's living unrighteously or someone who is just doing however they please he's doing what's right in his own eyes because that's that also seems to be the big problem because when people read the scriptures and they see the word obey they see submit the women back off they have a problem with it and that's because you're used to the stereotypical man you work, you come home, you take care of the kids, you're trying to do whatever it is. Maybe it's school, there's some kind of extracurricular activity, something on top of your household to deal with. And he's at home just chilling and eating. It's like, man, that's why so many of the women, they have that problem. They, they kind of, they cringe and they want to find a way out of trying to submit fully. They want their, their voice to be heard. They want, in fact, they don't just want to be heard, they want to direct. This is what I need. This is how I think. This is what... No, that's not, that's not the protocol that the Most High Himself has set up. Now that's why he said, the men need to be in order. Don't get me wrong. Don't, don't just submit yourself to any old dude. Or you know, there's, there's a lack of leadership. So any man that comes along, you start listening to. Because that also leads you astray. That also leads you into problems. So the righteous man who has his stuff together... That's whose orders you should be following. Hey, look, I got to work. Might have a 10, 12 hour shift. I need this done by the time I come home. Maybe, it, maybe it's dinner. I just work 10 to 12 hours. I would like a meal and I need to get back in the bed. It's time for me to go and do it again. I just need this of you. You need to submit. I need you to be in order with my commands. How, how else are we going to be able to move? How else could we possibly? Give me Amos chapter 3 verse 3. How else are you guys going to be able to move forward if you're going in totally different directions? It's not how anything, nothing's going to be able to work that way. You're going to stretch each other, you're going to pull each other until someone else gives in. Got that read, Amos chapter 3. Amos verse three. chapter 3, verse 3. Uh -huh. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Yeah, can two walk together except they be agreed? How, how are you guys supposed to go along? For example... If you have, because I hear this all the time, everyone has a solution. Some people say, no, we need, to, we need to bear arms right here, right now. We need to start killing police as often as they kill us. You know, it, it's only important if it's written in blood, their blood. Some people say, no, we need to educate ourselves. Some people say, no, how can we educate ourselves or, or, or go in a war and we're malnourished? We need to invest in food. We need to get organic things and start building up our bodies. Everyone has these different solutions. And that's exactly why you have all these different branches. You even have different Israelite doctrines. How are we supposed to walk together and some uh, give the ideology of combining all the camps? How are we supposed to walk together? 
Well, you can rape a woman. Well, no, you can't. Well, you can do this. Well, Christ and that. Oh, come on. Christ didn't exist? Yes, he did. You can rape a woman? No, you can't. We don't have to keep the laws? Yes, we do. How are we supposed to walk together? How are we supposed to save our people? Just saying you Israel, that's how you get into the kingdom? Well, tch. Aren't the Christians going to get into the kingdom just by saying Jesus is the Christ? Mm -hmm. He is the anointed, I believe. You can believe all you want to. It's those actions. How are you supposed to have order in that? And all this chaos, all these different doctrines, all these different beliefs and ideologies. Who, where, where are you going to find someone who's willing to come together? You're not going to have... If something has multiple heads, they're going to each pull in different directions. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 17 and verse 5. So you're supposed to obey them that have rule over you. Now the real question is, who should be ruling over you? Like I said, it shouldn't be any, any random average Joe that just came out of the street. And I'm not trying to dog any brothers that are just coming into the truth, but it's once you start understanding the statutes, commandments, and the laws of God and keeping them. That's when you, okay, now it's time for me to take a household, take a wife, and start building. Because when you don't have anything else, it's like, well, you know, I, I brought my part of the deal. And now we still have to fix you up before we can even begin. We still have to put our foundation together before we can even start building. Now you have more division. Now you have more disorder. Now you have more problems and contingencies to, to fix before you can even start. Get ready to get ready. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, uh -huh. whom the Lord thy God shall choose. Whom the Lord thy God shall choose. The Most High said, you know what, I'll, I'll set him up. Whoever it is to have, to, to have leadership, to have uh, some kind of say, especially within the churches, I'll set him up. I'll anoint them. And usually whenever there was a king of Israel, he would anoint them publicly. Everybody knew this is who the Most High has chosen. Now you have the elders. And even then he said, try the spirits by the spirits, because I see elders with, with faithful followers. I look at the elder, beard is shaved, no fringes, uh, prophesying with their heads covered. That's contrary to the scriptures. You, you take the law and you say, who, who lines up with this the most? Okay, well that's who, I, that's who I need to be under, that's who I need to be instructed by. But it all still comes down to the law. And then they are who will give the order, who will give the protocol, who will send down and, and, and uh, pass it down the line. Go ahead and give me Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 2. And once again, we're going back to who rules and how they rule. That's why no one wants to submit because in a sense it is dangerous. You have to have a real sense of trust, a real sense of love and brotherhood. Just like that old trust, the uh, trust fall, Oh man, I remember me and my brother and my sister, we used to do that all the time, but I had the hardest problem. Like, man, I really don't trust you. I, you, you slacking on little things. How am I supposed to give you something big? You want me to just fall back my whole body? If I hit the back of my head, I hit my neck, I can fall a certain way. How can I trust you with that? Go ahead. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 2. Mm -hmm. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. He said, as the judge is, so are his officers. That's why whoever's at the top, they need to be right. They need to be correct. Even when you have the old, kind of like a movie aspect, the band of thieves, right? You had all these thieves. Now, some of them are good at certain things. Maybe this guy's a pickpocket. He's good at, uh, you know, like, like a bank robbery type thing. But then you always had the top dog. He was the best at everything. He could rob the thieves. It was the top dog that was always the best. So when you're talking about the scriptures, that needs to be a man who's well-groomed, who's well-learned, and who's following and keeping the commandments. Don't just get under anybody. Don't just get under anybody who can give lip services. What, the, what did Christ say? He's a hypocrite. You honor me with your mouth. Christians say that all the time. Oh, well, I love God. I love Jesus. It's easy to give lip service. Let me see it. Because at the top, however he moves, that's how the rest are going to move. Read on. <clears throat> and what manner of man sorry mm -hmm. and what manner of man the ruler of the city is such are all they that dwell therein and however the, the, the ruler of the city is the rest of them are going to be like that you have a father however he moves 
the, the people within his household are going to take after him. However the ruler of the city is, if it's a, a corrupt king, it's a lot of crime. It's going to be few jobs. He's not going to actually be building or making anything better. In fact, he might be taking away from what he thinks is unimportant. So, I'm a crime boss. I might take away from the police force because I need things to come into the city. I need to move more weight. Or, I, I'm a, a bookworm. So you think investing in education is, is more useful. So now everybody in that city is going to be a little more educated as opposed to other places. So whenever you have this judge and this officer, just like in the scriptures, whenever the king was wicked, what happened to the people? They were wicked. The king was in idolatry, the people were in idolatry. Because that's the chain of command. Whoever's at the top, it slowly filters down and trickles down until every other layer has gotten a dose of it. That's why he said, that the whoever's at the top, that's how everybody's going to be. You can look at a, a congregation or look at anything, for example. See how they move. And even if the top dog seemingly, seemingly has something together, you know, okay, well, if your men move like that, how is it that you're so different? How, 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 how do you, how do they stray so far from what you're doing? Something to consider. Give me uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6. Because now you have to consider, okay, well, let's say you do come across someone who's corrupt. You are seeking truth. You are seeking how to build, how to move. And these men, they, they, they're orderless. They don't have anything. They, they're going off of their own merits. Maybe they have the lift service. They can talk a good game. So he said, what do I do about that? Read. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly. And notice, he said, we command you. This is a must. Don't try to compromise. Don't try to stay there. Don't try to, well, I could, don't. Don't try to reason with this. He said, anybody that's walking disorderly, leave. If they don't separate themselves, you need to separate yourself. Because how are you supposed to have, it's just like the clean roommate living with a slob. How are, you supposed to, how are you supposed to have order in that house? I feel like we should clean up every day. When you get up, you make up your bed, yada, yada. Oh, well, I don't think all that's necessary. How much order do you have in that house? How much progress is, is, is to be made in that situation? You can't do anything. we are not moving together. They're orderless. So even if there was an established law or rule, command or request, they feel they can do it as, as they please. And then you won't make any progress. Because now you have things you know what? colliding with each other. Contingencies are, are sure to arise. Give me Mark chapter 3, verse 24, last scripture. Go ahead. Mark chapter 3, verse 24. And if a kingdom be divided against itself, uh -huh. that kingdom cannot stand. Uh -huh. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. So when you have the man and the woman, if they decide to actually come together and they're following protocol, you'll have a household. What is the nation consistent of? A multitude of households. So he said, if a house is divided against itself, it can't stand. But even more so, if that first, that nation, Consistent of all those households, but we if you can't even get the household right, you can't build a nation. Because what you gonna build with? How are you gonna move? Everything that, that uh, is ordered, everything that's required, it's not even being met. So how are we supposed to build a nation when we can't even get the small things together? The women still want to back talk. The men still don't want to lead. Uh, it, it was so much easier in the world. I could just be like, man, whatever, or she could do it. No. Now it's time for you to do it. It's time for you to take a stand. It's time for you to start moving. You to start educating yourself in the scriptures. Your woman can't teach you. She's not supposed to. Even with De Deborah and Barack. What did Deborah do? She said, you know what? I'm not the man. I'm going to step down. She understood order and the chain of command. Somebody, who knows? Maybe she was more qualified. Some might say. But you know what? For the aspect of order, she said, you know, I'm going to step down. 
I'm going to respect the order established by the Most High. Because this, that's how, how else is the nation supposed to be ran? How else are we supposed to move? How else are we supposed to build anything? So if the household is divided, how are you supposed to build a nation? And within that household, if the man and the woman are divided, how are you supposed to have a household? Now you got kids, they're living in confusion. Mom said this, dad said that. Who do we go with? Who should we listen to? More confusion, more confusion, less and less order. And we're, fur we're straying further and further away from making actual progress and coming back to the most high. And with that, I say shalom.